Your fantastic, all bold, fantastic, thank you. Your fantastic three-year-old video on the VTS barometer shows performance with you flat VX if the VTS barometer is over 50%. This leaves a lot of money on the table like recently. Have you tested short VX performance with higher signals such as 60, 65, 70? That's a super good question. Let's go to the volatility barometer on the main channel. And what he's essentially talking about, in this video, I used my volatility barometer and I basically showed that if you use my volatility barometer, shorting volatility, shorting the VXX, only when it's in the 50% or below level, and then 50% or above, you're gonna be in cash, these are the results. It would have been a strategy up 1500%. If you would have used the VIX doing the exact same thing, low VIX being the bottom 50%, high VIX in cash being above 50%, the VIX didn't even beat the S&P 500. And then the S&P of course is all the way down here. So I wanted to demonstrate that the volatility barometer is actually an extremely robust indicator, essentially 1500% better than using the VIX index. This is why I say like my work is based on all of my volatility metrics and the volatility barometer is an exceptional measure of volatility. But what I wanted to say for your question is, and that's really, really good that you've noticed that 60, 65, maybe even 70 would be better. You're not wrong. When I made this video, I don't actually use 50% for anything in my own trading. I just needed an example for the video that didn't seem like I was cherry picking. I didn't want to say 63%. Somebody would, you know, in the comment section would say, oh, 63, really? Why would you use 63? You're cherry picking. So I just wanted to use something that everybody at a glance would accept as this is not cherry picked in any way, shape or form. It is literally half the signals you're going to be short vol and the other half you're going to be cash. But like I said, very astute of you to notice that probably 60 to 65 is the more ideal number and you would get numbers performance even better than I showed, but it might sound like cherry picking. So that's why I did it in the video. But yeah, you're right. For my personal work, no, I don't use um, 50% at all. We are typically in what I consider either long equities or short vol, probably about 60% of the time, sometimes even about 65% with this strategy. And then here as well, we don't use 50%. You're right. That does leave a little bit too much on the table. Now, if you go as high as 70, 70 is going to lead to pretty large drawdowns, but the terminal result, terminal meaning if you just did something, traded it, came back 10 years later, and you actually didn't have the roller coaster of emotions through drawdowns, just the terminal results, probably 70 would be even better. But I don't think the average investor can sustain drawdowns much larger than, you know, once it starts to get about 30%, they tend to start looking for the exit. So you definitely want to avoid drawdowns that are too large. If you're short vol or long double equities 70% of the time, you're going to have some pretty excruciating drawdowns. So I would definitely, even though the terminal results might be a little bit lower, 60% is probably a much more accurate number. It's going to allow the most number Number of people, there's still going to be drawdowns. Investing is investing and it's still painful sometimes, but you don't want to get too high. You don't want to allow drawdowns to get into the 35, 40% range. At that point, most people are going to pull the plug. Very, very good that you've noticed that 60 is actually better than 50. You know, if you gun to my head, if you made me pick a number, 63, that's a good one.